welcome to a real conversation between two native English speakers. I'm Liz Wade, and this is Adam Navis. Hello. Hi, Adam. Hello. I was going to make you introduce yourself as like a surprise introduction, but <laughs> I decided not to do that because it might be awkward. <laughs> and we have a good thing we avoided that awkwardness. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, welcome to our conversation program uh, where we discuss this week's Spotlight English program. And this week's program is called Telephone of the Wind. Um, and without talking too much about it right now, this is one of my favorite programs. Mm. And uh, as I was just telling Adam before we started, uh, this is also one of, I think, one of our most difficult programs for mm -hmm. me. So I am really excited to talk about it with you, Adam, um, and to talk about it with our listeners. Now, if you are watching this on YouTube, we'd really love it if you would just click like a second and um, and then subscribe if you haven't already. That really helps our videos get seen across YouTube and um, really helps our algorithm. So that's great. And if you want bonus content, check out that join button right underneath the video. Um, you can uh, support Spotlight English and get some really cool benefits as well. Um, and if you would like to get scripts delivered directly to your inbox every week for just about a dollar a week, you can go to our website and sign up for that service as well. You have to make a little, uh, make a little, what account. is that? Uh, account. Yes, there we go. Um, make a little account and then um, get those scripts and a link to the audio every week sent directly to you. So, uh, yeah, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and YouTube, and everywhere you get your podcasts. And yeah, if everywhere you, you look, we are there. Everywhere you look. Um, and if you <clears throat> haven't listened to this program already, maybe pause this video, go back and uh, take a listen. I will say it is it is a really sad one. I think many people can um, hmm. they can connect with this program uh, really well, and um, yeah, I think it it is really gonna hit you in the feels. Yeah. So <laughs> let's dive in, and even the title help me understand. Yeah. Telephone of the wind. Like if you so, if you haven't listened to this program and you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know what, I'm just gonna keep watching this because. You know, those people are so wonderful. Right. Telephone of the Wind, Liz. So Telephone of the Wind is actually the English translation of the Japanese <laughs> words, which would be Kaze no Denwa. And Ooh. I'm I if I'm sure you are you're... Japanese and listening to this, please forgive my uh my translation errors. But we but, applaud um, your attempt. Yes, exactly. So uh this is actually a story from Japan. And uh, it have so is there's this man uh, Itaro Sasaki, and he lost his cousin, um, probably before before 2010, maybe around there. Um, it and when you say lost, say you don't mean he can't find yeah, him. His cousin died, right? And he really missed his cousin. Um, and so what he did is, I think, was there a telephone? He yeah, he built, mm -hmm. um, he built a telephone. Uh, in like a corner of his garden, right? Yeah. And so he didn't connect it to anything, but it is a telephone, like you, you pick it up and you can speak into the telephone receiver and there's a telephone box. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe there is even like a like an actual uh, booth, like a telephone box booth. Um, and you go in there and it's not connected to anything, but you can speak into the telephone. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think this is really common for people who have lost someone. Maybe you want to tell them something. You want to tell them about your day. You want to yeah. pretend that they can hear you or um, mm -hmm. that they can have a conversation with you again. And um, But it's, it's hard to do that and just talk to yourself. Right. Right? <clears throat> um, so you're sitting there and you're uh, you're just kind of talking to yourself and and that's you might feel strange. So yeah. this was a place where uh, Itaro Sasaki, so, yes, mm -hmm. um, uh, could go and just talk to his cousin. He'd go to this telephone and he would pick up the telephone. I see. I make this little telephone. 
with my fingers. I uh, would talk in the telephone and just tell his cousin things. Yeah. And so, I think, you know, I, and it goes, it's not a telephone anywhere. It's a telephone of the wind. Right. Your your voice goes out to the wind. Yeah. And I think what was it, you know, he, he did this thing for himself, right? Yes. And, and maybe a few people in his community. But after this large disaster where a lot of people died. In 2011, in, uh, in, with the with the um, earthquake near yes. Japan. Yeah. Uh, people were drawn to this. It wasn't, it wasn't just, oh, this well, is... Well, he invited them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is it's, he did something for himself, but it found resonance. Other people right. related to it in a way that they were drawn to it. They, they, they still had to choose to go and talk, um, talk into this, or there was a notebook they could write down, uh, some things if they didn't want to talk. Um, right. and I, because of I, course, of course, so many people had lost people in the earthquake or the tsunami that followed. Um, and, uh, the town that he lived in was quite, uh, it was not destroyed completely, but there were, right. there was a lot of damage. Um, and so many, many people just left the town. So, you know, they're feeling lonely. They've lost people and yeah. stuff like that. Well, of course, because when you lose someone like that, suddenly you don't even get to say goodbye in the way that right. that maybe you wanted to. Or um, we we long, those connections are still there. Yeah. You know, our, our heart is still connected to their heart in a way that we still want to, we still have needs. And we don't yeah. have a lot of good ways of of doing that. And that's why I was so touched by this program to see like, oh, how how could I do that? How I, I don't even think about talking to the people that that I have lost grandparents or or otherwise. Right. But it did really make me think about, you know, what what could I do? How could I are there things I still have to say? I don't know yeah. if that struck with you. I actually um I heard about the telephone of the wind first in a different podcast um, called This American Life, which is, um, I mean, obviously this isn't about America, <laughs> but um, I heard about the telephone of the wind in this podcast and it really, um, it really touched me. Hmm. Um, and I found myself and I still, I would love to go to this telephone of the wind um, in Japan uh, I heard the podcast just a few years after my mom had died and it was very sudden how she died. Um, none of us, I have three sisters and, um, my dad is still living and none of us got to say goodbye. And, um, so I often, even, even today, um, uh, 12 years later, wow, it's I, been 12 years. Yeah, it has been 12 years. Even today, you know, I want to I want to tell her about things that happened during my day or about her grandkids um and and all of those things, right? Like just normal parts of my life. Yeah. And I can't. Yeah. I can um you know, I can talk to the I can talk to the wind. Yeah. Um I can um you know, write write it down. But I feel like there's a special, um, there's a special connection with going somewhere mm. to talk to that person. Yeah. Um, like maybe that's the only place that you like, like yeah. exactly like Sasaki, right? Yeah. Um, going to that place to talk to his cousin. Yeah. And so when he has that that urge to talk, he can go there and then um, yeah. have that conversation. Um, well, and of course, and, a lot of people visit the place where the person is buried. Right. Um, yep. Either on a birthday or a significant site. yep graveside, um, and and do talk, lay flowers, or or say a few words. Um, I think that's different though, because when you do visit a gravesite, you see a very um, specific uh, symbol of death. Yes. Right. You're that reminded of is, the death for sure. Yeah, that person is definitely gone. Yeah. You're not, you're not talking to them They're yeah. It's just a stone in the ground or, you know, or whatever the, whatever, however that person is buried. Um, but going to a telephone, you can almost, um, 
you can almost imagine that you are talking to that mm -hmm. person. Yeah. And so I think there's something very different from visiting a gravesite to going to this telephone booth and having this conversation. Yeah. I just think it's there's something so beautiful about it. Yeah. You know, it's Huh. It's, I wonder, you know, because we're obviously not in Japan, like how right. how we we find those places in our lives. Um those special alive places, not just ones that remind us of death. I had a right. small, and this is not, it, it will seem kind of silly, but it was meaningful to me mm -hmm. as, um, so I was playing the Nintendo Wii. We still have a Nintendo <laughs> Wii. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and um, I was playing the baseball game. I love the basic, you know, this is 2006. And so yeah. my grandfather was still alive. So he, we had created yeah. a little character for him mm -hmm. in that. And he, his character came up to bat and it was just touching to be like, oh yeah, yeah he, he played this, this system with us while, when we did this and before he died. I still and, have my mom's, uh, me as well. Yeah. And it's kind of yeah. nice it, it, yeah. because it, they're not dead. You know, that's, it doesn't yeah. remind you of that. It reminds you of, oh yeah, they moved and they were here and they, and it's, it's obviously not them. It was never them. It's just a computer, you know, yeah. drawing of them. But um, it was very nice, and it was this—it was just this moment of like connection that I really yeah. I, I appreciated in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I really love this program so much. Um, it, even though uh, whenever I listen to it, uh, it does make me cry, especially if you if you read through or hear the quotes mm -hmm. that people have left. Um, I don't know. Maybe I could read some without crying. I, I have one right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, you read I, it I then won't and I won't It says, cry. we were all so sad. We did not think we could make it through. And that is why we never talked about dad until now. But talking to him on the telephone today, it changed something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that's why I just think it's so beautiful. Like, it really is different um you know remembering someone and then talking to them on the yeah. telephone well it's very hard to hide your emotions when you have to talk uh right. they, you find you know if you've ever had to do public speaking you know people who give speeches and they, i didn't think i would cry i didn't I think i'd get cried choked on up. this very conversation uh <laughs> program before yeah. so yeah yeah talking. and i have and i have given speeches where i have cried yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 a um you know mostly on spotlight we talk about hope and positivity and there is there is a there is a level of it here like taking oh, yeah. something that is very difficult <clears throat> and finding a way to channel in it in a positive way but no doubt no doubt yeah. it is hard to lose someone you love and, and i think one part that we touched on before that I really love about this too is that, um, you know, he, like you said, he made this for himself and really opened it up because he saw that it was so important. And I love that part of it as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I would love to hear, um, you know, what our listeners think about this program or about this idea. Um, and, how you think about the special people in your life that you have lost. Um, how do you, how do you think about them? Do you, do you write to them in a journal or something? Do you visit a grave site? Um, would you love to visit this telephone of the wind like me? Um, or um, if you are in Japan, have you visited it? Um, I would really love to hear your stories um, and if you feel like you can share them with us, um, yeah, write a comment. I would love to read that. Um, and then maybe you will love this program as much as I do and find meaning from it as well. Um, yeah, so uh, I think, like you said, this is kind of a sad program, but there is some hope. And I hope that you have seen this program either on YouTube or on our website at spotlightenglish.com. You can listen to it wherever you find your podcasts. 
Um, and I think that I have also included this on my list of my seven favorite programs playlist mm. on YouTube. So if you would like to check that out, um, you can check out what my other favorite programs are. Um, I am pretty sure there's one about smallpox. There's <laughs> this one. Um, I'll have to think. I don't, honestly, we have so many favorite programs. It is really hard to get them uh, down to seven, but I promise you those seven are really worth it. And Adam has put together his yeah. own seven favorite programs. Mine playlist. are not as dark as yours, but. <laughs> dark? This isn't dark. It's beautiful. I didn't say dark isn't beautiful. Mine are more. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, so yeah, check out those playlists on YouTube and um, yeah, let us know what you think. Our email is contact at spotlightenglish.com if you want to send us a message and uh, yeah, check out joining as a member or if you want to get all of the scripts delivered directly to your email, then uh, check that out on our website. And until next time, we hope you listen, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out.